welcome Mitchell Brownstein to the show. Mitchell, thank you for so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. So you're the new mayor, or going to be the new mayor of Coast St. Luke as of tonight, but uh, acclaimed. Yes. Wasn't much of a battle. Uh, why, why is that? Why, why did you get acclaimed? Why wasn't there a, 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 a more... Well, I ran a full-out campaign yeah. against nobody. But yeah. I think that's the thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> First of so all, you ran as, I mean, you, you did this as if you were going to have to run against someone. Well, absolutely. And I think that's always a very important thing to do, not only for a better possibility for acclamation, but also it's important to meet the people. And I met a lot of people during this uh, two-month campaign where we've been going door-to-door, -door, speaking, putting up posters, sending out flyers. You know, it's been I, great. I saw that. You were speaking to a lot of people. You are giving your cell phone number to anyone that would take it. Your business card, here, call me. Uh, that seems to be a bit of a refreshing approach. You don't really see that from a lot of mayors. Like, here's my cell phone number. Why is that so important for you? Why do you want to speak to so many of your constituents? Well, I think Cote St. Luke is a relatively small community. We're still, we're 34,000 people. But I want to be considered a friend, a mayor that's a friend of all the people. So I'm asking people to friend me on Facebook. And if you're not social media <laughs> friendly, then I'm giving them my, my business card with my cell phone number. We have some seniors in the community, and mm -hmm. I've been getting calls. But people call you with their ideas, and they're so happy about what's going on in Cote so Let's talk a bit about those ideas. What are you hearing? Because, you know, I've, I've, I want to talk about Cavendish, but what are you hearing from, from your citizens that they want you to deal with? Well, I think our community is a community of choice. People want to live in Cote St. Luke because we offer something for people of all ages. You could enjoy something every day in Cote St. Luke, whether you're a senior or a junior. We have a new aquatic and community center where we have swimming programs. Our library has wonderful programs for our seniors, lectures, movies. There's something to do every day, and I think really that's important. They want top quality garbage collection and snow removal and we should ensure that our tax rate is reasonable and I think we're doing that and we have to continue to do that. You do have really excellent facilities at Cote St. Luke, the library I'm thinking of, which is an exceptional library that you've got over there. Why have you been able, why has Cote St. Luke been so successful at that, balance, balancing you know, tax, uh, tax rates with providing services? Well, I think we've done it over time. I think our, you know, we have built an arena first and then, then this tremendous library and then an aquatic and community center. As the community has grown, it has grown. I mean, it was about 22,000 people when I was first elected in 1990, and now we're 34,000. So the tax base has gone up. People have come to our community. We built condos. You, the tax rate comes up. You respond to the community. Well, you, so you've mentioned that you've seen some growth. You now have 34,000 people living in Cote St. Luke, but you want more. You're making a big focus here to bring more young families into the community. Why is that? Well, I think it's important for the rejuvenation of a community to bring in young families, and we've been doing that. We have a provincially ranked uh, swim team now because we have two indoor swimming pools. That's just five years ago that we built that aquatic center, and it has ballrooms, which we want rented. They're a great facility for use for, for all types of events. So I, I think a community grows when young people come in there. I think it's important to service our seniors. We have two hospitals. We have a hospital, and we have one hospital, I should say, but we have a hospital and we have seniors residents, so I mean, we take care of everyone. Does that the sort of aging demographics of your city concern you at times? I think it's uh, changing. And our seniors are very active. Our men's club has over 500 members. It's the biggest it's ever been. And they're active people. Seniors today are not like the seniors in the past. Okay. And we have to respond to those concerns and needs. Uh, let's talk about a concern of many, and that is the extension of Cavendish. Since I was a little kid, they've been talking about extending Cavendish Boulevard. Why do you think you're going to be successful at this? What, what, what are the sort of the winning conditions, if I can use that term, for getting a Cavendish extension? Well, everybody calls me a consensus builder, and that's probably one of the reasons why I had the support of the entire council and why I got acclaimed. And I believe that I want to use that type of approach in dealing with the mayor of Montreal, Denis Coderre, and our provincial government. Anthony Housefather is a good friend of mine, of yeah. course, our member of parliament. And uh, the billions of dollars that Trudeau is promising for infrastructures to municipalities I think now is the time, and if I work with these people, talk to them, speak to the naysayers as well, yeah. and address their concerns, I think we can get this done. A lot of folks in NDG would have a problem with that. I've heard uh, some uh, council members uh, very upfront that they are opposed to this. How will you deal with that and with the, the borough of NDG? So a lot of people there do not want this to happen. Before I got here this morning, I was on with one of them on the email already, and I'm saying as soon as you get back to town, let's meet. Let's address your concerns. This is not going to be a direct link. This is going to be a link that's going northeast. So it's not direct Cavendish to Cavendish that we're talking about. We're talking Cavendish that goes to DeCarry. Okay, and so this is, but is this different from what your predecessors have tried, or has this always been the plan? Well, it's been the plan that I think has been accepted as what's going to happen for probably the last 15 years. Okay, quickly now, let's talk about Meadowbrook, the development. You want to stop that. Why? Well, there's no development happening right now. 
Uh, there, it has been uh, zoned as a golf course, and uh, hopefully, it's going to stay that way. I mean, you need you need green space in this uh, in this city, this island of Montreal, and. Uh, I think that it's really important so far for the last 25 years. There's been talk about development years for years, but uh, I don't think it's ever going to happen because it's such a beautiful spot. Mitchell Brownstein is the new mayor of Look as of 8 p.m. tonight, right, at Council? Absolutely. Fantastic. Good luck with that. Thank you so much for joining us and Thank come back you. anytime you feel like. All right.